Hi, my name is Bob Grinier and I'm a volunteer with the Martin Fleischmann Memorial Project. Okay, so in uh, one of my previous videos I called uh, it the ear and the sun and it's about this structure with these spheres and the strange radiation that kind of uh, matches uh, these structures. Uh, this was from uh, Suhas Raukar's Echo Fuel uh, uh, that image and this is from um, Lion's Lion 1 reactor. This is on the inside of the quartz with these kind of counter-rotating vortices that would appear with this sort of edge around it. And this is a X-ray which was exposed to uh, the Lion 3 reactor after it had concluded its run. And you've got a very, very similar structure going on. And um, uh, I also compared it to the uh, inside jewel. So this is from Lion 2. And this is a structure where most of the rest of the reactor um, quartz had become this uh, sort of horrible green stuff, um, uh, very brittle and stuff, but this had stayed perfectly intact. And it had some um, uh, sort of a thin layer on the inside um, of a kind of like creamy whiteness. Um, and uh, anyway, so what I did was uh, I was com uh, sort of comparing the, that sh shape to the ear kind of shape um, of... Um, uh, sunspots and uh, found there was a high degree of similarity. Anyway, I was just looking on the web today and I found this composite image of the same event, uh, they call it proton flare, um, of a sunspot and it had the magnetic field uh, um, uh, during this event here. So I thought, well, I recognize that. It just looks like the stuff we've produced in Lena. Um, uh, now, it is kind of like the magnetic field image is kind of like not in the same aspect exactly uh, and so on. And so um, uh, I have um, brought it in to this um, what, um, image and I've overlaid it on these two um, the uh, photo, uh, the microscopic photo of the uh, damage to the silicon dioxide on the Lion 1 and on the X-ray here. So I'm going to show you it on the um, uh, X-ray uh, first here. So I will bring in, well first in I'll show you what the jewel looks like. So there's our jewel uh, on our X-ray, so from the Lion 2. So we have our three lions here, all producing exactly the same structure. One on the inside of the quartz, one on the actual jewel, which is the quartz, and uh, the other one on an X-ray. So highly repeatable experiment. Uh, and uh, so if I fade that out, you'll see uh, roughly an estimation of, of where that's going. Uh, okay, so then I brought in the um, the uh, this one now. What I've overlaid there with uh, uh, a filter type um, called luminosity is uh, that um, uh, magnetic field from the. Um, uh, colliding, what they call a colliding sunspot here. Um, I'm not so sure that is exactly the case. I think it's just one of the uh, structures that gets produced by large exotic vacuum objects. Uh, anyway, so, sorry, I don't have my tripod with me today, so this is going to be interesting. Okay, so uh, to overlay that, you can see I'm going to take that out. So you have the structure here, the structure there. So you can even see that down in this bottom corner here, you have this uh, bit that sticks out. And it's uh, right there. I mean, it's it's just it's comically perfectly aligned, um, and there is this sort of field strength, the uh, field direction that goes one way. Maybe this is in, and these are out. Uh, like this is a this is a south pole going in, and this is a north pole going out, or vice versa. But what we can say, and I noticed this, or mentioned it in my previous video is that the, I expected there would be an intense field, magnetic field strength in this center here. And uh, it would certainly appear that that is the case. Uh, I don't know whether it's, it seems to be getting whiter and whiter and whiter and then it just stops. I mean, is it just cutting off on its sensitivity? 
Um, but the beauty of using this uh, sun data is it actually gives us the kind of flow of the magnetic field um, that you don't necessarily get when you look at the actual uh, jewel itself. However, this is uh, some microscopy and you can see that there's lines here coming in at this angle and over here there's, um, in fact, there's a one of these uh, classic kind of um, uh, ring spot with the spoke evos and I, I scaled that over here so you can see that this is probably um, obviously it's not the full radius as as it was on the Hutchison sample um, but maybe this was 150 micron um, diameter uh, um, uh, exotic vacuum object um, so you can see how that lines up but we have these lines pulling in here and remember I'm going to share all the images so you can look at these in your own time so it's pulling in here, but over here it's changed direction. And in fact, that's exactly what you see um, on this image. Uh, so these are coming in uh, uh, at this angle, but over here it's changed direction, it's changed direction down here. So it's uh, very, very consistent. This is obviously something that um, nature likes to do um, in every case it can. So, um, yeah, so if I see here, you can see this triangular area here, there, and if I overlay it, the triangular area is here. And if I pull this out, this is the kind of... Now, as I said, that there's perspective, smart, slight perspective adjustment on this to, to, to line it up. We don't know what angle this was. For, uh, I took this at, um, or the X-ray was exposed to the uh, reactor. We don't know what angle this uh, picture was taken but I think you can get the idea that <laughs> everything kind of uh, is is as it is um, you can see like it, it's red in the middle here and blue on the outside and when you put that in there it kind of lines up with the fields so that's that then I've also done it over here um, let's see if I have that there over here yeah okay so uh, there we go and um, that's that's the total one, but I've got it here. So you can see there that in this case you get even more information because there there does seem to be this anchor point over here. And actually, if if you remember, there there was a video I called. Uh, well, I was joking because it. <laughs> I said there was like two black holes, and I went, mm, "It's a hole and it's black." Well, actually, it's the same structure, and it's on the like outer part of the inner core for the lion reactor and there's like a, a big hole here and a big hole here and there's a crystallite structure and yes that actually matches up but I, I haven't got a top on really good image of that so I'm going to take that again and do another comparison with this magnetic field structure uh, aligned but you can see here if I take that out so it would appear that this one is hardly done any damage and there's a lot of damage around this spot so there's two spots here so it looks like in this actual structure it isn't just one two here there's one two three at least uh, and that becomes obvious only because you use the magnetic field that comes from the sun <laughs> isn't that cool that's so cool so the sun can teach us about Lena and Lena can teach us about the sun now the other interesting thing is is that if we're saying this is pulling material in in an intense way, and let's say this is uh, electrons or, or light, uh, there's a good hint that it might be light because uh, the light's not seeming to be escaping, or even if it's matter, um, it might explain why um, when we do the analysis of the white area here, um, you have this uh, tungsten silicide. Uh, here uh, it's got 5.6 percent tungsten there's no tungsten in the reactor now there is a um, uh, a band overlap um, and so I discounted this at the time but uh, you know maybe maybe there really is some tungsten there and because there's such an intense magnetic field here or there's so much light exposure or whatever something's going on but it could be that Lena is actually a very magnetically driven process um, so I'll let you go over these uh, files as you wish. Uh, there's also this other data set, uh, the CAR2 HE evolution during proton flare. So they're saying actually during these uh, um, events, protons are shot out 
Was that what's exposing the X-ray? Was it the incredible magnetic field line that's uh, pulling things in? And the other thing is that what we can expect is that um, if, if the material has uh, magnetic material in it, that uh, if the, the field is still existent when the, um, the uh, structure dies, um, or rather the reactor kind of turns off, one might expect the um, uh, material left behind at these points to be magnetic. And I'm going to talk about this hopefully, uh, maybe I can get another video out on the weekend. It was actually the one I wanted to uh, produce today. Um, however, I think it's important to get this out to you first. So um, there we have it. Uh, intense magnetic fields, 100% aligning with three different materials uh, 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 sorry, three different samples uh, from three different line reactors. Uh, one ceramic, one ceramic quartz, and then the X-ray. And the the interesting thing about the um, these uh, these three items, you have a polymer and two silicon dioxide, so none of them become it can become magnetic. Um, but that is not always going to be the case with some of the things I hope to show you. So thank you very much. Uh, it's a, it's a, as I say, it's a real pleasure to be able to go through this learning with you. And um, if you have any comments, of course, I'd love to hear them. Please subscribe. Um, uh, and if you find um, in the data that I've shared over the last couple of years, uh, go into the images and see what you can find and see whether there's any uh, kind of cross-correlation uh, between uh, solar flares and and so forth but look look at this it's just it's just beautiful look at that it's literally amazing so I'll put it there look at it it's just incredible the coherence nature repeats itself on every level it does the same thing every time okay so it's, it's kind of like your friend, okay? It's not exactly the same, but it's nature and nurture. So with that, I say thank you for your time, and I will see you in the next video.